We all know that an SOP or a statement of purpose is an important document that decides our fate in the study abroad process. In this video, I'm not going to bore you with silly mistakes that students make when writing their SOPs. Instead, I'm going to share my experience of reviewing over 500 SOPs and some of the real mistakes that students make that can critically affect their application. So without further delay, let's get started. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I'm the founder of Wise Up, and on this channel, I make videos on studying abroad, job readiness, research mastery and communication skills, essentially all those areas where you need to become wiser to succeed in your career. So if any of these topics are relevant to you, you can subscribe to this channel. And now let's talk about some of the worst SOP mistakes you can make that can affect your study abroad dream. The first and the most painful mistake that students are making nowadays is in the improper usage of AI tools. What most students are doing is that they are preparing a rough draft of their SOP and then they are submitting that to ChatGPT or some other AI tool and asking it to join all the points together, make it flow and improve the language. Let me tell you, this does not classify as your own writing. Even though the idea might be yours, the SOP is being written by ChatGPT and therefore it is AI generated content. High chances that the university is going to reject your application if you submit this SOP. Another mistake that students are making is that they are not realizing what is the difference between plagiarism and AI generated content. Plagiarism means when you copy the information line by line from another SOP and incorporate it in your own SOP. When you're getting your SOP written by ChatGPT, it's not necessarily going to be plagiarism because ChatGPT is not going to use some other student's essay and write your SOP. But it is still going to be AI generated content because it has not been written by a human being, no matter how much you try to humanize it. Therefore, the best thing to do is to limit the use of AI tools. Use it only for minor language and grammar correction. If you want to know in detail about which AI tools you can use and how much should be the usage of AI tools in writing your SOP, then you can check out my previous video. Now, the second and another big mistake that students are making is getting their SOPs written by study abroad consultants and SOP writers. Most of these consultants and SOP writers have a fixed template of an SOP. And when you share your projects, work experiences and extracurricular information with them, what they do is that they fit all this information within this template and share it with you. When you get the SOP, you feel, wow, this is such a nice and customized document that I've received. But the truth is, it cannot be more impersonal than this. In fact, you would think that they've also given me an AI report and plagiarism report which says that my SOP is completely free of AI generated content and plagiarism. But in reality, all these online AI checkers cannot be trusted. They are unreliable and completely bogus. If you don't believe me, just try this out. Write a paragraph of your SOP in very simple language. In fact, make a few grammatical errors and then submit it to this online AI checker. You will see that it will show as 100% original content and no AI generated content is there. Now use the same paragraph and try to replace some of the simple words with more fancy language, more fancy synonyms. Make sure there are no grammatical errors. And the moment you submit this to that same online checker, it will show as 30% AI generated or 50% AI generated content. So please don't trust these online AI checkers or even these SOP writers and study abroad consultants. What is important is that you write these SOPs yourself. It's okay if your language is not that great, if your grammar is not very good. The important thing is that the voice is yours. Later on, you can always get your SOP reviewed by experts and make it ready for submission. This is the reason why at WiseUp I've started an SOP and LOR review program where we take the SOP and LORs written by you, go through multiple rounds of reviews and feedback sessions, improve the overall language, grammar, polish your document for you and make it ready for submission. If you want, you can also go for AI tools for minor language and grammar check. 
the SOP that you prepare through this method is going to be very personalized and this will help you get admission in top universities. The third mistake that students make when writing their SOPs is incorporating way too much technical information when talking about their work or project experiences. What you need to realize is that your SOP is not a resume or research paper where every minute technical information has to be included. Your SOP or a statement of purpose is about you. So while you do share some necessary technical information, you need to bring the focus on yourself. So talk about what has been your contribution in the project. What are some of the challenges that you have faced while executing these projects? How did you overcome these challenges? What was the final outcome and your learning from this experience? When you share the information in this way, it gives an understanding to the admissions committee about the entire project experience and how you've grown from it. It also gives them the confidence that if you face these kind of challenges in your life and manage to successfully overcome them, then in your master's or PhD program, when you face similar challenges, then you are well equipped to handle them as well. Now the fourth and also one of the biggest mistakes that students make is not adhering to university instructions. When it comes to SOP writing nowadays, it's very different from how we used to write SOPs five years back, where if you prepare one document, you could easily copy paste it for all the universities. It doesn't work like that anymore. Nowadays, some universities would ask for a 1000 word SOP. Some would ask for a 500 word SOP. Some would ask for an additional 500 word personal history statement. Well, some will say, I don't want any of these. I'm going to ask a couple of questions. So no matter what the university is asking, it's important that you stick to those instructions. For example, if the university has given you a word limit, then you stick to that word limit and not a word above it. If the university has asked you to incorporate certain points in your SOP, then you only focus on those points and not include any additional information that you feel is right. If the university has asked you certain questions, then you answer those questions to the point and not include any unnecessary stuff that you feel is important. I know what I'm saying might seem very obvious, but this is something that students are ignoring again and again and simply doing what they feel is right. Or another reason could be that they are too lazy. They've already prepared one SOP and now they just want to simply copy paste that SOP in all the university essays possible. Guys, let me tell you, universities take their instructions very seriously. So if the university has laid down certain requirements, make sure you follow all of them while applying. So everyone, these are all the mistakes that students are committing nowadays while writing their SOPs. I hope you will remember these things when you are drafting yours. Now, if you wish to learn in detail how to write your SOPs, then you can join me for my course on Write Your Way to Study Abroad. As part of this course, I teach you in detail how to write your SOPs, LORs, personal statements, scholarship essays and emails to professors. With 70 plus section wise samples and 15 plus full essay samples, by the end of this course, you will become a pro in writing your admission essays. And if you want to get your SOP and LORs reviewed, then you can join me for my SOP and LOR review program. As part of these programs, we offer you two rounds of review on each of your document, give you content level and language level feedback, polish your document and make it ready for submission. To know more, the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. And now, Thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic career ahead.